Um, what I would like to share tonight, and maybe during the night sessions, <clears throat> really the Lord shared it with me some time back, actually years ago, and he did it, he shared it with me when, um, <clears throat> when he was dealing really with New Creation Fellowship, but <clears throat> um, some things went a little bit different way um, shortly after he shared it with me, and he kind of put a hold on it, <clears throat> and um, I thought she was getting up for me. <laughs> And um, and I've thought about it, <clears throat> you know, over the years, and wondered because it's a very it's a very wonderful sharing uh, in the book of Joshua that is, um, I mean, just so powerful if we can get hold of of what it's talking about, and. Um, <clears throat> the subject is really one word, and that is Gilgal. Now, I don't think most of you have a whole lot of information on that place that was in the land, but that's the, that's the subject of it. And what it pertains to is after being delivered from Egypt and going through all of that with the Passover and the firstborn and everything, <clears throat> after making it through the wilderness, uh, they come to the Jordan. And there are some things that happen at the Jordan that bring them across it, but most of us just really look at it like they cross the Jordan and they're in the land. That's the way I looked at it before. But the Spirit of God began to show me that, that they were brought into Gilgal and all that that meant. And usually in my mind, now I don't know about y'all, y'all tell me, but in my mind I always kind of thought they crossed over, they're in the land, and then they go to Jericho and they march around it. Does that kind of sound familiar? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's this whole thing about Gilgal that relates to coming into the land or, if I could put it like this, coming into resurrection coming into the life of the land and everything now is going to be on a different basis and everything's going to be... Uh, and, and so Gilgal uh, was like a, this landing strip. It was like these, this, these forces that had passed through all of this territory and stuff and they got to this place and now the plans are being made, the people are getting ready, the, everything is, is going to happen now for taking the land. They're going to take the land. And they'd been, God had told them about that when they were still in Egypt and told them about that at uh, Mount Sinai and told them about that at um, <clears throat> where they didn't cross in. I forget the name of it real quick. Um, and, uh, and they didn't cross in. And, and, so much of the things that were said in the wilderness didn't apply to the wilderness. When ye come into the land, this. And um, the way the Lord showed it to me was when, you know, when we are ready or when the body is ready, when the body is ready. And I'm sharing it here. And, you know, I'm going to tell you something that's very strange. But a lot of the major movements that have come out of me that God said, let's go, get introduced in Ireland. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and this time I felt like, I wonder if the Irish, if this isn't even more going to be life to you, I just because you're the, the point. You seem to be the point of a lot of these things, the, the, point, the, the people that walk point. And, um, <clears throat> but it's for all of us if we, if we grasp, its, grasp its meaning. And tonight, basically what I want to do is start trying to, to set it up uh, 
and what I'll be doing is going over um, sort of the preparations and the act of crossing the Jordan. But my goal, and most people know that stuff about the rocks and the water and all that kind of stuff, you know, most of us, I think, know that. That's not where I'm going. That's all to set up this landing, as it were, on the other side of the Jordan and this place that we never recognized was a huge of spiritual significance to God because he starts doing this. We're going to do this and this is going to be set up and all of this has to be in order and ready and this is it. We're in the land, but now we need to be in a certain place to take the land. Wow. Yeah. And so, uh, so, like I said, tonight it will be um, just the setting up of that, what happened, many of the things you know, but maybe, maybe, just maybe, the Spirit of God will, will begin to sow this into Gilgal and sow this into the preparation so that we can, um, so that we can embrace a, a larger picture of what it means to take the land, a larger preparation in our own hearts and, and to understand what it means to take the land by Joshua, which is Jesus. Um, uh, Joshua is the Hebrew name for Jesus in the, um, in the New Testament. <clears throat> and so um, uh, let's start with uh, Joshua chapter 3. And again, re please remember that everything we're going to go through tonight is not really where I want to go. I want to I want to get this thing across the Jordan, but you could you can understand if uh, if I started across the Jordan that would be uh, not enough. You know we need we need that preparation too. So I hope it's not um, uh, grievous to go over go over this part again. <coughs> Joshua chapter three. And let's start at verse 2. <clears throat> and it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host, and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the, uh, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall move from your place and go after it. And so here they are talking about, we're getting ready to go over, but this happened after three days. So that's why I think this has to do with resurrection into the life of Christ, him being the resurrection. And this is, this is all they've been sort of there for three days, um, and sort of buried into death. But now they're going to really go into the death and come out of it on the other side. And as I said, I, I think that you're all fairly familiar with this, but it, but I, I, but I want it to become our story, not just a story in the Bible. I want us to see this in light of walking with, through this with the Lord, walk, walking through this process and attuning our hearts not to the story, not to the spiritual significance of the story, but the spiritual reality that can be formed in us as we literally move to a whole different phase. I mean, how many of you would like to step into a different phase? Yeah, Praise so God, you know. Reason. You know. Now, it's all true already in Him, but it doesn't matter if it's all true in Him if it's not true in us, if we're not walking in it, if we haven't embraced it, if we haven't said, yes, Lord, to this. This is my story, and I'm going to put it into my heart and into my mind, and it's going to be my life, my Jesus, my cross. In, by reason of him. So you have that, that three days after it came to pass and see it, it doesn't come to pass until after three days. It doesn't come to pass until three days are up. And then uh, these officers are following what Joshua said, uh, went through the host and they commanded the people saying, when, 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 Okay, well, that can, be, that can be a whole bunch of separate experiences where you've sought the Lord and God begins to reveal that. 
or that can be a body thing where we that have seen it and those that are coming into it acknowledge it as the truth as it is in Jesus and begin to say, this is, you know what, I'm ordering my life after this. I, am, I, I want my mind and my heart and my spirit to be attuned to this as a, re, as a greater reality than my own life and my own stuff. This is God's movement. And, and it moved them, but that was the shadow. And it needs to move us. So when you see the ark, which is what? The presence of God. That's where the presence of God was. When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and do what? And go after it. Okay, so this is, this is, this is personal. Amen. Even though this is, <clears throat> even though this is spoken to all Israel, even though this is being spoken to us here, <clears throat> this is personal. God can say this to Israel, and somebody in Israel cannot pay attention. And I want to pay attention to the movement of the Lord, yes, Lord. and I want it to be real in me. And so, so when, when you see the ark, okay, so, you know, they had, it, they had him lifted up. So you, know, you do know what that means, don't you? Yeah, the cross. If I be lifted up from the earth, I shall draw all men unto me. This spoke he of the manner of death which he should die. We say lifted up and glory to God and all this kind of stuff. But this is to see Christ crucified as that which we follow and will eventually, when we cross the Jordan, be who we are. Not in teaching, not in doctrines, not a special group that teaches this. Come on, amen? Because if we start making it a special group that teaches this, then we're the focus. This has to be who we want to be one with him where literally we're not seen That's right. instead of being seen as you know yes we're the ones who you know lift him up on the cross and everything but rather that he be seen for who he is and when we see him like that the lord told joshua and jo and i think joshua here does represent jesus because it keeps saying the Lord told Joshua, and you'll see as we go, you're going, well, this is kind of an in-working here that the Father and the Son and the Spirit of God are working this, making this thing happen. So when, when you see the ark, then, okay? So he's saying don't move. Don't move until we've all got our eyes on Christ crucified. Don't move. Stop it. Slow down. Sit down. Shut up. <laughs> and get before the Lord and say, I want to see when they see. I want us to see him in such a manner that it moves us beyond our um, religious commitments in the earth. Amen beyond our religious commitments in the earth. Let it be eternal reality getting us instead of us trying to get something. Okay. Then when you see it, then go after it. <laughs> go after it. But that's not all. Uh, then shall you remove from your place and go after it. All right. So, Lord, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus that what this means in your heart and what you're trying to say to us. We want to go after it, but our problem is we don't tend to leave our place. We want to go after the truth of it, but we don't want it to just override us and, and overshadow us like what happened to, to Mary. She was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. And then Christ began to be brought forth. That's what we want, Father. 
We want to go after it by leaving. We want to leave our place because we see something. We see Christ crucified beyond what we teach, beyond everything that we know to this point. And we want it to be living reality to us that moves us. Moves us strong enough that we leave our place and go after it. Amen. So look at Joshua 3, 6. <clears throat> Joshua spake unto the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. Okay, so... It's going to explain what that means, but this Ark of the Covenant that's lifted up represents what again? Christ crucified. It's Christ crucified. So he's, he's got to go in the Jordan. The Jordan is the river of death. You know that. Most of you know that anyway. The Jordan River has always been representative of going into death. And he's saying, uh, he's saying, uh, that the, that the ark that is lifted up, in other words, Christ crucified, has to go into death before you. you that's the death you have to see. Amen? Amen. Amen? Way before you start seeing your death. Because yeah. if you don't, then it's always going to be about your death with Christ instead of his death that took you down. He says, I'm going to go into death and take you down into the Jordan but he has to pass before us as far as our understanding you see what I mean yeah. I mean it's almost as if you're looking at Jesus on the cross and you're going oh thank you for 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 or dying for my sins and thank you for dying so that I could have healing and thank you that I could you do this for deliverance and thank you know, what is that else on the cross there oh my god it's me I oh I'm dead too in other words you understand but there first has to be a convincing of that death, and then you'll be convinced of your death. But if not, you'll question your own death. It has to be strong in you. That's why it has to pass before you, as it were, into the Jordan. So, here, uh, so, um, yeah, let's go ahead and go to verse 10 and 11. Now, remember, Joshua represents Jesus, so this is Jesus talking. And Jesus said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Hivites and the Pizzites and the Girgashites and the Amorites and the Jebusites and the Termites. All right, because it's going to get them all. <clears throat> What an incredible thing to say here, hereby. That's, can the arrows of the Almighty hit our heart instead of just hearing words? The arrows of the Almighty, God, look at this. This is, this, this could break you down. Hereby shall you know, why, what? What? How will I know? How will I know? When you see Christ crucified go into that death, and then you're going to end up going into it also. This is how you're going to know. Okay. Historical fact mm, has no power. The historical fact of Christ crucified has no power. Did you know that? There's absolutely... Okay, let's see. The doctrine of Christ crucified, no power. No, in, oh, no, none, no power. So if you've set your course to know the teaching or you've set your course to um, uh, be one that carries the ark, but you don't understand this by life and more importantly first by death then then really we're just playing i mean really we're, really we are we're just playing at it i mean i know all of us have sincere hearts 
but something has to shake us. You know what I'm saying? Something has to shake us and say, come on, there's more of the reality of him that, that the Spirit of God can shed abroad in our hearts that will, again, cause this movement. Because it's, it's like a movement. It moves you. It's a movement. And that's the whole thing is that this is getting ready for the big movement in the promised land. It's going to get you in there, but a whole lot of people apparently come and sit down in Gilgal and never even ask the name of the place. Maybe they get up and they, you know, go around Jericho a few times, you know, and then they sit back down. But my Lord, I'm going to read it again. And Jesus said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among you. This is it. And if you don't have this, then you're going to question at times. You're going to wonder, where's God? You know what I mean? There he is right there on the cross, as it were. He's the Lamb of God. He is Christ crucified. And that he will listen to the words of Jesus without fail. Drive out. From before you, the enemies, the enemies. Got any enemies? <laughs> I'm not talking about Sister Susie or something like that. I'm talking about enemies in you, enemies that, are, that it would do everything to hinder the expression and manifestation of the living God so that we're just... We're just, we're just good talkers. We can, we can say it better than anybody else. I don't want to say it better than anybody else. I want Jesus. Yes. I want the real thing. And I want it the way the Father wants me to have him. So that means that I, I want to see into your heart. I want to see Jesus, Father, as he is in your heart. Not as I understand him right now, because how far, how low can that be? My God, how low, how very sparse is that compared to how he is in, in the Father's heart? You know, we, there's no way of knowing how big he is there, so we have to just get low and say, I'm sorry for all of the high-mindedness and everything that I've had thinking that I know you, and I just really sincerely, sincerely from my heart, I want to see him as he is to you and in you and of you. And Father, we just pray right now in the name of Jesus. We tell you that, Lord, even, Father, even as you stood there with Abraham and you showed him the vastness of your son, and it wasn't in the number of stars, it was in the vastness of how big he is in your heart. That Abraham looked not at the stars, but at you, you, your face, your heart, and believed you. We want to see how you see him and how you want him to be seen in us. So we ask you, not because we deserve it or have earned it, but because we believe your heart is the one place that we can find him the way he should be found. And we're ready to admit we do not know the vastness of that. We thank you. We do. We thank you for all that you've given. But Father, in Jesus' name and for his glory, Expand that in us. Amen. Verse 11, Behold the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth. <laughs> I love it. 
Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth. Oh, man, come on. That, see, that's so much bigger. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of New Creation Fellowship. Or behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of, you know, any, any you know, fire ministries or whatever. Too, too small. <laughs> too small. Well, not enough. It's not enough. Of the whole earth. And, you know, that was one of the things I loved about that with Abraham when, you know, in, in the, the 14th chapter, I think it was, when Lot left, he said, lift up your eyes now and look. And from the Euphrates all the way down here, and he just stretched over the whole land, and, and it was like he's showing him the whole land, you know, and it's a, you know, it was a big land with, and it all belonged to God. And then the next chapter, he goes, okay, forget all that land stuff. Look at this. <laughs> you if you could number all of the universe, all of the constellations in that universe, all of the galaxies, all of the stars, so shall thy seed be. It's your seed. It's in you. My Lord. My Lord. Hallelujah. And what are we doing with him? You know what I'm saying? What are we doing with him? He's that big. And what are we doing? Well, you know, that's not, I'm not trying to make that a point of condemnation. I believe the Spirit wants to stir our hearts to look at the ark and say, okay, we're going in with you. By this ye shall know, okay. Amen. And if we don't really, really know yet, then let's, you know, let's get an instant replay and then, go, and then look and go, wow, this is in HD. And then, you know, keep going until it's so vast that we're just like, wow. So shall my seed, the seed that is your son that you've put in us. The one you put in us, and I just keep you in the little box called Randy's Understanding. Randy's Understanding. That kind of rhymes, but anyway. <laughs> Randy's Understanding. That's all. That's, you know, oh Lord, I want to glorify you with this little box of Randy's Understanding. This is, I know that you're so happy with this. How can we do that? How can I do that day in and day out? And, and to the Father's heart, how can I do that to him? He, he wants us to see as he sees. He took Abram out there and showed him that. He wasn't holding back. Verse 11 again, Behold the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth, Passeth over before you. Look what's passing over before you. It's passing before you. Catch a glimpse. Get more than a glimpse. Decide this is everything that I want and everything I live for. And my and this is I don't want to mess around with tinker toys. I, I want to see the vastness of this, and I want it to overwhelm me and give me uh, 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 the hereby shall I know. <laughs> That's what I want. I want Jesus, yes, but I want to, I want to stop saying that, uh, not really, but I mean on this front, I want to stop saying that, and I want to say, I want the guy that you know. We call him Jesus, but explode him in me let the spirit of god just have the ball running around and revealing him and showing and opening the word and instead of us going oh look what i saw we go oh my god you know we used to have a saying in the 60s that's blowing me away man <laughs> this is like whoa this is blowing me away we need to be blown away, Amen. far away, Amen. <laughs> far away. And verse 15, 
And as they that bear the ark were come unto the Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest. What is that saying? It's a river, but it's harvest time, so that's when all the rain's coming, and that's when this thing is overflowing its banks. Okay, so it's not just we're going to cross the Jordan. We're going to cross, you know, wherever the, the brink was, it's going to be way back here, and everything's going to be moving faster and faster and faster. The Lord says, okay, you're going to be going in. <laughs> what do you think of that? What do you think of that before you understand what he's going to do? Do you, do you start counting the cost? Do you start saying, well, what's the old saying? I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. You know, I remember when I was... Uh, in Bible school, and I read, uh, I was reading where Jesus said, not my will, but thine be done. And I realized that the Spirit of God had already been showing me that I was in Jesus. For example, this, a bunch of the Bible school students were saying, um, I want to be like Paul, and I want to be like David, and I want to be like da-da-da-da. And even, and doesn't this sound like what was going on in Paul's day? I want to be like Apollos, and I want to be like da-da-da-da. I want to be like this. And, and I want, someone said, I want to be like Jesus. And I remember the Spirit of God speaking to my heart and saying, you're in me, that you're in him. You are, that, you're found in him. And if you're not found in him, then you're not Paul, and you're not David, and you're not, you know, and so I was reading that, that, those scriptures where Jesus was praying and the disciples are sleeping. And he says, not my will, but thine be done. And the Spirit of God says, you're in him. And when he prayed that, it, it was prayed for you. You don't have to get up the gumption to pray it. It's already been prayed for you. When you became one with Jesus, that's it. It's done. It's settled. And so there's the end of trying to be this or that or whatever else. Whatever he says, that's what you say. You know, it's like, you know, you go out to eat and somebody that's paying for it says, I'll have so and so and whatever he's having, you know. Well, that's what I'm having, Jesus. Whatever you're having, I'm having because I'm in you. And I'm with you, too. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. To be able to be in him and also with him? Because <laughs> we can be in him, and that's theological to us, and yet we're not with him. We're sort of against some of the things, you know. You just, you know, I mean, it's like the spirit of the Jordan River overflowing his bank. Jump in and <laughs> shoot down to be with him, you know. Just go, you know. Stop, you know, it's like, Jumping in the Jordan and going, I don't know, man. It's trying to throw him upstream on it. Well, you know, I'm, I think this is going to be harder than I thought. No, it's not. It's his body. It's his Amen. life. Amen. Did you ever feel the nails? No. You didn't feel the nails. He did, but you're still his body. What you're supposed to feel is his heart. Yeah. No. Yeah, you need to know his heart. The disciples were located with him in the Garden of Eden, I mean, Garden of Gethsemane, but they weren't with him. Could you not pray one hour? Could you not pray with me one hour? No, Lord, I'm tired, or I've got this, or, you know, all the, all the excuses and things. There are plenty of excuses, okay? They really don't ring true when you get to a certain place in his realm. What rings true is his heart, and you, you are tired or sick or worn out or, or old. <laughs> I think I'll mention that one. 
and, you know, your body doesn't move like it should or this or that. But your Jesus still does. You know? I mean, we don't know. Scott might have been having a heart attack today. It might have been a full-on heart attack. And, you know, I went up and prayed for him and everything, but, you know, it, and then we're down there and we're doing all of our stuff and, and then Deb and I get ready to leave and go start walking up. Y'all are still taking your, you know, adventure thing. And here comes Scott and Tara walking now. I'm going... Now, I'm the last one to say, you shouldn't do this. You should be back. You know, if you're going to get up and do that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I did. I'm going to hug your neck. I'm sorry. I love you, brother. You know, because that's Jesus to me. I think he can overcome those things, you know. And I can hear somebody. If, if Scott dies, well, Randy, you shouldn't have let him da-da-da-da. Well, <laughs> Okay, hang me, you know what I mean? But I still believe in Jesus that way. I believe he can overcome our flesh. I believe we're the ones who can't. Because <laughs> we're trying too hard and we're not looking to the cross. We're not looking to his life. I mean, yeah, Ben? Right. Right. Amen. And I mean, so we go. Um, well, Jesus is the only one who never sinned. I remember, I had this little argument with the Lord early in my walk with the Lord, and, I, and you know, and uh, it, was, it was said that, um, that we should be able to handle all this stuff, and, you know, and I, and I, or I was, no, I was reading, that's right, and, and I'm looking at it like, you know, he's wanting me to do that, and I literally said, to the Father, I said, yeah, but he's the Son of God. I said that. And he said back, who do you think lives in you? <laughs> I'll never forget it. He said that. Who do you think lives in you? <laughs> yes, sir. You know, I mean, it's like, you know, it was like a father talking. <laughs> and um, I realized, okay, yes, I'm going to fail. I am. But he's my life. And I have a better chance of not failing if I it's not my life with Jesus' help, but yeah. his life. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Hallelujah. So that means so what that meant to me was like that cross, you know, if it was hanging here, I've got to <laughs> embrace this thing and it's like winds and people and everything's always trying to pull me off of that and and make another stand on something else. And I just want to be with him anyway. I'm not looking for an excuse to let go, <laughs> you know. I just want to be with him. And so, but, you know, the, the battle gets less when you're my life. You're, you know, I died. Amen. And, but it's not, it can't be that doctrine thing. There is no, there is no yeah. strength in the doctrine that you're dead with Christ. There is no help. God knows we need help. Yeah. But the worst thing that I could do is just indoctrinate you to the teaching when there's all of this fullness that is Him. All of this fullness. I'm looking at the stars again. <laughs> all of this fullness that is Him. And I'm going... Well, I could never get to the moon. And he's going, forget you getting to the moon. This is, so shall thy seed be. <laughs> now, who's ready to believe that? Let's see a show of hands. Let's pray. Father, we just want to believe that. We, 
we, we and and not not just some sort of religious belief. We want it to overwhelm us so that that is what we see and what we have and what we want based on all reality, not just all truth, because then we'll make it truth. All reality as it is in him and as it is in your heart and, and the son that you want out of us. So, Father, we're not even going to add in the, the possibility of our failure. We're going to, as Ben said, Father, we're going to add in without fail because that's you. That's you. The, our hope is you. Our hope is Christ in us. So that's you. It's not us not failing because we will, but the answer is that we shouldn't even be in the equation. So thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for not just stirring us in a service. Father, put something in us that just won't let go, that won't stop, that won't won't lag behind and be okay with it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Jesus' name. Verse 17. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm. They've walked out in the middle of the Jordan and they've stood firm in death. They've stood firm. Oh, man, aren't we called to be priests? Okay, now what does that mean? Oh, God, I don't even want to talk to you about that. <laughs> you know, it, it means so much beyond our little comprehension of, you know, of, uh, well, I'm the priest of my family. Are you now? <laughs> I don't think so, you know. It, it has to do, you know what? It has to do with what the Holy Spirit tells us it has to do. Ask him. <laughs> However, if you want to pursue it further, <laughs> I've shared a long thing. I don't know. What's it called? The priesthood of the believer? <laughs> okay. So if you want to try to keep up with her, because <laughs> she knows them all, right? <laughs> Praise God. Okay, so, <clears throat> and the priests that bear up the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground, where? In the midst of the Jordan. They're in the midst of it. Okay, so you got three guys hanging on a cross and Jesus, during, you know, on Calvary. It's the guy in the center. Focus on the guy in the center. <laughs> okay? Put him in the center. God did. If I have to get this simple, <laughs> it's the guy in the center. And just focus and make him the center. And then forget those other two guys. And let the Spirit of God begin to breathe that he's in the midst of the Jordan. Spiritually. It's the fulfillment. It's the fulfillment. He's right there in the midst of the Jordan. And he's standing firm. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. This day you shall be with me in paradise. He's, he's up there ministering for God's sake. <laughs> you know, we're going, poor bleeding Jesus. He's having a ball. <laughs> Not really. But you understand what I'm saying. He's living. He's still living. He can't help but do what he does. But that's what he does. We need to let him do that in us. See, we get in a hard situation. We go, these nails hurt. I don't want that, but I got a splinter in my foot before they put the spike in me. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. 
could somebody pull the splinter out? What about the spike? Anyway, you know, but we're, we're all wrapped up in, in the, the problems of it or the, the you know, well, how, how is this possible? You know, there, see, it's like living in the land of the impossible and asking how is it possible. It's not in the land of the impossible. You need to get over in his land, his life, the land of all things are possible through him. It always says that. It doesn't just see, yeah, I'm God and therefore all things are possible. What do you want? You want to learn how to do brain surgery right now? No, that's not it. It's not anything like that. It is all things are possible through him. So you, you, find, you find Christians doing that, and they say, okay, all things are possible, so I can, you know, I can drive an 18-wheeler today or something. Or maybe Paul, and he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can be abased, or I can abound. That's, that's his... That's his explanation of I can do all things. It's not, I can, yeah, well, I can do this. Because the Bible says, brothers and sisters, <laughs> that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And amen. Well, yes. Can you be a base? No. <laughs> I can't do that. That's the one thing I can't do. But I can do everything else, especially that be exalted thing <laughs> part. You know, <laughs> I'm real good at that, you know. In fact, y'all can add more money to the offering. Yeah. Anyway, how come we don't take offerings? Well, never mind. <laughs> anyway, you see what I'm saying? All things. <laughs> Did you catch it? That's a... <laughs> I thought she was going to jump up and take an offering. <laughs> so he's in, he's in the midst. This is Jesus in the midst of the Jordan. This is what you're supposed to see. Not a story, not a, you know, oh, back in Joshua's time, that was like a really cool story, and I really like that. No, 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 don't like it. Just love the Lord and seek the Lord and say, Show me reality behind these words and literally let the words fall away and open up the universe of reality to me. Or am I just happy to go, oh, you know what this says? This says, in the midst of the divide. You know? <clears throat> Stood firm in the midst of the Jordan that's overflowing its banks. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, it didn't say at this point that this is them just standing firm in the midst of it. <laughs> you know, oh, the Jordan is going so fast, it's mussing my hair. God, stand firm in the cross and Christ and him crucified and, and stand firm in what he, what his view of that is. And if you've heard too much of my view or Kelly's or anybody else's, Ben's or anybody else's, then it's time to get your own view, but make it real and don't play with it. Don't play with it. Don't think it's something that, that you play with or that you maybe you're not playing with. Maybe you're, you're, you're using it, you know, like the, you're using it like a sword to deal with things instead of taking that sword and thrusting it in yourself. And saying, as your life blood flows out, saying, may it be Jesus' life from now on. May it be his life. Yes, Lord, I take this. I gladly take it. stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan and all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. I was texting to me. 
we passed clean over. <laughs> or maybe they passed clean. That's a possibility. So it stood firm until everybody's in, until everybody's in the Jordan and then on the other side. And it, it'll, there'll be more verses that deal with that. So, uh, so let's go to chapter 4 now. And chapter 4 is also going to do that, and it'll be a little bit shorter. Um, uh, as we prepare for the next time that we get together so that we can get into Gilgal. Because however wonderful this part is and the part that this is the part most people know, Gilgal is absolutely necessary preparation to launch forth and take the land that God promised. Wow. We usually only get this far and go, okay, we'll cross the Jordan. Let's go around, let's go around the <laughs> Jericho. And the Lord would say, no. You, there's a lot of stuff we got to get done here. This is your landing strip. You're landing here. And here we're going to make the plans. And here we're going to do the things that are going to be necessary. All right. So chapter 4, verse 1 through 3. Joshua. And it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over Jordan that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you twelve men out of the people... <laughs> out of every tribe a man and command ye them saying take you hence out of the midst of Jordan out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm not just out of the Jordan where <coughs> someone stood firm on this this I be lifted up thing someone <laughs> you know I mean it would be sad if if Joshua heard God's voice and ran through and said, well, I can only find like six that can stand firm. So I only found six. What do you mean you only found six? Y'all follow me all the way? To that. That's it. That's all I've got. Other people, they'll freak out after a while. Or it'll be too, it's too heavy. This ark, it's too heavy. I, I can't do it. Find someone else. There's plenty of people here. Can there come a conviction in our hearts that says, I don't, I don't care what anyone else does. I'm going to be that one. You know what I mean. I'm going to find the Lord in such a way that his life will fulfill what is necessary in this situation. You know? And it's, you know, I mean, it's, let's be honest. It's easy to hear this and and in a meeting and stuff, and go, yes, amen, and then, you know, slowly everything fades. Mm -hmm. And it does. Yeah. Or we keep pressing and pressing and pressing yeah. and saying, Lord, what do you mean by that? Lord, you know, I'm coming back to this. Yeah, I felt life there. I felt the Spirit of God. I felt your heart. I felt what was important to you. I felt it's possible. I, I want all of that as reality in me so that I am not moved. I can stand firm by Christ in the reality of my death, but more importantly, his death. Take you hence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, 12 stones. And you shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where you shall lodge this night. Where is the lodging place? Gilgal. 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 It's interesting that it doesn't really name it at this point, but, you know, it's like, um, now didn't, again, didn't some of you sort of just see this as them setting it up on the other side of the Jordan just sort of randomly somewhere? Mm -mm. Gilgal is going to be forever a place that they can go back to, rehearse, get back into, and, and then launch out again. Because it's eternally true. 
Yeah. So we don't want to miss this. Why don't we pray for that? Father, we don't want to miss this. We don't, we don't want to just have an event tonight and, and not have you um, <clears throat> not have this worked in us. And so we're asking you right now by your spirit and based on your heart of how you would like this to be worked into us, we ask you to move mountains to be able to do this. We ask you to help us go into that Jordan and get those stones and forever plant it on the other side as a remembrance of death and your death and, as it were, your resurrection and what that means to you instead of us just seeing it as Jesus dying and then getting up three days later but to see the true meaning. And you're giving us, Lord, your Father, you're giving us the true meaning of resurrection in these scriptures and in relationship to Gilgal. The true meaning. Much more complicated than just dying and then getting up a while later. So we ask you, make, make it real in us that we may bless you back with it. In Jesus' name, amen. Leave them. Leave them in the lodging place. Leave them. Leave them. Don't move them. Leave them there. He'll, he'll talk about it later. This is going to be a what? Memorial. Anybody understand memorial ministry? Yeah. Memorials, you don't move. They are memorable. Memorial. Where you shall lodge this night. This is, we're putting this down, then you can find rest in it. And this will be a big deal toward that end. Joshua 4, 5 and, five, 5 and 6. Joshua 4, 5, 6. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan. And take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. Okay, well, the, one of the things you need to realize is, uh, and it'll, it'll show this several times here before we get done, and there's not a whole lot of verses left, but these guys are sent back in after everybody's passed over. The priests are standing up. <laughs> Still, while everybody's going over and stuff, hey, I got an idea. Go back there and, you know, get some stones under their feet. Because I want the stones that they stood firm on. I want it to end up being a memorial on dry land that you can see. See, the ones, not any of them. Get the ones that are under their feet. Those are special, mm -hmm. like, like the Rock of Ages. Take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What meaneth ye by these stones? Well, the, the meaning of these stones will be forever throughout eternity will always represent death, burial, and resurrection. Death, burial, into the Jordan, and resurrection. They will always represent eternal reality as in the heart of God, just like everything else will. And will always be the, the, the stones that can't be moved, if you will, will always be the the from generation to generation to generation so that these words, when your children ask you and then when they grow up and their children ask them and they grow up and their children ask them, there is what God did for us 
through death, burial, and resurrection. And maybe better said, what God did to us in the <laughs> by bringing us down into that death and bringing him up as that life. That this, these stones may be a sign to you. Father, just give me a sign. There, go look. Go to Gilgal. How, will, how do I know I'm really dead? Go to Gilgal. <laughs> you know? And by the way, there's a lot of other stuff that has to do in the Bible after this pertaining to Gilgal. But we, we're not going to get into all that right now. <clears throat> Let's see, where was I? Verse uh, 6. Okay, let's do 9 and 10. And Joshua set up the 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priest which bear the Ark of the Covenant stood, and they are there unto this day. In other words, Joshua did now, went and got 12 stones and put them where on the other side. He took those stones and he put those into death and the 12 brought 12 stones and put them into the land that were in death. Okay? And y'all have heard much on this, so I don't, you know, I don't feel to go into too much on it. Joshua set up the 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan in the place where the feet of the priests which bear the Ark of the Covenant stood, and they are there unto this day. Good God. Well, let's go to Israel and find them. <laughs> <laughs> For, verse 10, for the priests which bear the ark stood in the midst of Jordan until everything was finished. I love that. It's as simple as can be until everything was finished. It just can't get any simpler than that. How long were you guys in there? Until everything was done? How long do you, or they're standing there, how long do we wait? Until everything's finished. How long do we stand firm? Until it's all finished. Can we, can we do that? Can we do that? Can we let the work be finished in us? Can we let the work be so settled that we literally, not literally, but we carry those stones within us and pass it down to our children? And then they say Hi, to their kids, I've got some stones I want to give to you and tell you about. I want to put these in you. You know, For the priests which bear the ark stood in the midst of the Jordan until everything was finished that the Lord commanded, uh, that the Lord commanded Joshua to speak unto the people according to all that Moses commanded Joshua. And the people hasted and passed over. Verse 11, And it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over that the ark of the Lord passed over and the priests in the presence of the people. So, when it's all being wrapped up, it's like, okay, we done here? Yep. Let's, let's go on to the resurrection side now. Let's find out what Gilgal means. That's, that's it. You know, it's like we've made this long journey. We have passed through so many. We've seen miracles. We've seen terrible things happen. We've been out here for 40 years. But there's, there's a sense that what the Lord wants to do to us inside the land, because that's all he ever talked about. When you get to the land, when you get to the land, when you get there. Well, let's go find out. Let's go to Gilgal. And then verse 11, and it came to pass when all the people claimed over. Did I read that one? Okay, verse 14. <clears throat> on that day, the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel. <laughs> okay, so he magnified Jesus in the midst of all that. What does that mean? It means, my son, you went into death. You brought the people through death. You brought them into a whole new reality of my heart that I've always wanted them to have. And 
I want you magnified, not just I want you magnified in the midst of all my people. That Christ may be magnified in my mortal body, whether by life or by death. Oh, that's a New Testament scripture. <laughs> that my son may be magnified in your mortal flesh, whether by life or by death. That Joshua <laughs> may be magnified in all Israel. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's incredible. This stuff is incredible. You know, it really is. And this is just the intro. <laughs> okay. On that day, the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel. In the sight, they saw him. They saw him as the Father saw him. And they feared him, and that only means that they respected him in the, in the highest way possible, and they, uh, as they feared Moses all the days of his life. And the Lord spoke unto Joshua, saying, Command the priests that bear the ark of the testimony that they come up out of Jordan. And verse 17, Joshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come ye up out of the Jordan. And it came to pass, when the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord were come up out of the midst of Jordan, and the soles of the priest's feet were lifted up unto the dry land that the waters of Jordan returned unto their place and flowed over all his banks as it did before. Okay, well, it's done. We don't need to do another miracle here. <laughs> Not that it was a miracle, but it's done now. It's closed up. I mean, can you see an... An Israelite on the other side come running up and going, hey, what happened? <laughs> you know, swim, buddy, swim. <laughs> Jumps in. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Jebutut? <laughs> well, he was trying to come, you know. Man, you don't try to come on your own, on your own timing when you feel, I'm ready now. Well, it's a little late, Jebutute. <laughs> it's not going to happen. You know, you get with the Lord. You get with the Lord. You seek the Lord. You, you say, Lord, in your timing, in your way, but it has, I want it to be you, and I want it to be your timing, and I want it to be done in your spirit, and I want to be with you through the whole process. And you said it's possible because you said, without fail, I'll deal with all your enemies. And I'll bring you into the land. So, you know, this is the basis. He's saying, this is the basis. This is how you can know. You can know. That's what he said to Abraham. Abraham said, how shall I know that I shall get the land and the inheritance and everything? And he says, well, let's get some sacrifices here and then make an altar. <laughs> That's what he did. He said, Let's make this altar and stuff because this is how you're going to know. How's that going to da, da 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 Because I need to brand in you the reality of Christ crucified, the reality of his life and the reality of who we are now, now already, but awakened, awakened, awakened. Not getting, you understand. Right. And so, <clears throat> in God's heart and mind, the priest stepped out of there with lifting him up, lifting up Christ crucified and bringing us all into death and gets on the other side. And that chapter, and, and it really is done, basically, that chapter is done. It closes up. What's the next chapter? Father saying Gilgal. Gilgal. So let's do uh, <coughs> Joshua 4, 19 through 20, and that'll be the last ones we'll look at. <coughs> and the people came up out of Jordan on the 10th day of the first month. The 10th day of the first month. Month. What does that mean? 
Well, Lord, it means more than Passover. It's not Passover yet. Raising the firstborn. Not yet. It's the day you choose the lamb. And they're the lamb chosen. It's Christ in them. But this is the lamb that's been chosen. You're a crucified lamb. You're gone through the death. This is the one that is going to represent the 10th the day. And everything that's going to happen is now not just Jesus. It's Jesus in his body. 10th day of the first month. And in camp. In Gilgal. The people came up out of the Jordan and encamped in Gilgal. The key people came up out of Jordan on the tenth day of the first month and camped at Gilgal. This is where we need to get some stuff settled. This is, yes, all of that's great. All of that's wonderful. All of that is eternal that has happened. But everything from this point on is brand new. It's different. It's the land. It's the promised land. Everything we did back there, when the river shut up, you need to shut up. <laughs> yeah. The, the Strong's definition says for uh, in camp, says specifically to tent, pitch a tent. To pitch a tent. I don't know what difference that makes. But well, we talked about pitch. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, you know, and they use the word pitch, actually. I don't know if it's right here, but they have they used it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I knew that they did. So, yeah, thank you. Okay, so they encamp. In, uh, it's on the east uh, border of Jericho. So it's right there. But it's not Jericho. Yeah. And it's not the story of Jericho. And it's not all that we see of the glory and the fun and the shouting and the blowing horns and all that stuff. Oh my God, it's serious stuff coming up. It's serious stuff. If you're gonna if you're gonna launch forth for from this day forward to possess what God already promised you, you're gonna need more than a few horns <laughs> and a, a marching spirit, you know. In verse 20, and those 12 stones which they took out of the Jordan did Joshua pitch, there it is, pitch in Gilgal. Those, I love that. And those 12 stones, because this is, this is resurrection reality. It is moving in the fullness of what God has done and says is already yours. Those 12 stones, which they took out of the Jordan, did Joshua himself set up, pitch, in Gilgal. Mm -hmm. Father, we just, before your very heart, before your very presence, before your very being, we say, we want Joshua, we, we want him magnified in us. We want the reality of all that was carried out there, not the, not the story of, uh, in the book of Joshua, but all the spiritual reality that that means and that, that should settle it for us so that we can get on with taking what is already ours. We ask you, to work the reality by revelation, by unveiling of your heart concerning your son. Of your heart concerning your son. Father, that was the whole journey of Abraham too. It was all about your heart concerning your firstborn son. So, Father, we want to approach the next time we're together. We want to approach 
the next chapter in this movement of your people and what it is that moves, what it is that motivates them in a manner that it will influence, it will change, it will break down and build up, it will do all it's supposed to do in us so that we are clearly lined with your heart for your son. Father, let us meditate as we lay our heads on our bed. Let us, let us seek you while you may be found. Let us redeem the time that you've been given us here. And let us take in as hungry hearts all the words that fall from your heart and the meaning of those words. In Jesus' name, amen.